All right, you guys, it's Ross the Fig Wasp. We're here in early December in the Philadelphia area and I was putting away my trees for the winter. I was taking my potted trees and putting them somewhere so they don't get you know, damaged by the cold this winter. We are waiting a little bit actually in a, I'm positioning them in an area that we can still see like a 15 degree low because I am hoping for something at least in the teens to really put them to sleep. Uh, they're still a bit awake, believe it or not. So even in December, it's been a weird year. Uh, but I was thinking as I was putting them away, I'm like, I never did a, a pruning video this year. And uh, we did, but we did do a video this year on light and how critical light is to actually set the fruit buds and how that's so critical for production. Uh, because all the pruning that we do, all the thinning that we do, even the staking of the branches, the actual structure of our tree, whether that's now when the tree is dormant or even during the growing season, you know, it's absolutely critical to uh, pay attention to that for production. So if you wanna have more fruits, this is really the video. The video we did actually this summer or maybe this late spring, it was talking about maximizing light. It got about 20,000 views. I'm sure you guys can find it. Ross Ratty Light or something like that. Fig Trees Light and it'll come up. In that video, we talked about all the different ways you can maximize light because it's not just enough. Some of us just can't lift up our trees, put them right over here and now it's in more light. You know what I'm saying? We, we don't have really have all that ability necessarily. Maybe our tree's planted in the ground. So all these different steps, including pruning, is absolutely critical to set our trees up to actually give them the most amount of light possible. Now, I wanted to go through in this video to talk about pruning, but unfortunately, I'm not doing any pruning this year on my potted trees. Um, I have really learned this year, especially with the younger ones, you're way better off, I'm way better off, at least where I'm at, my location. There's so many ways to do this, but in my location, I'm way better off not pruning these trees. And I know that everyone has a different situation, right? So with the potted tree and you live in a cold place, you gotta store it somewhere. And if you're gonna store it somewhere, how big is your storage area? Can you let the trees get big? Can you let them get tall? Do you have to keep them small? You know, there's so many, so many different things to this, um, different thought processes. Everybody's got a different scenario. But for me at least, I would rather keep them a little bit taller. I don't like them as, as tall as, uh, as some of these are, maybe up to my shoulders. That's, a, that's just too tall. But what I will do is actually bend these branches in the storage area and just shove them in there. And then when I bring them out in the spring, instead of pruning them, I'm actually just gonna stake the branches. And a lot of the branches here already are staked. I removed a lot of them on these potted trees, especially the young ones that we've been training trying to get the right bare bones, right? The right skeleton to our tree. So that's my personal philosophy. And I'm gonna talk about why I'm not really gonna be pruning them until they really get this bare bones skeleton that I want them to have. You know, some people have different thought processes and approach this so differently. You know, someone might say, well, as soon as I get the skeleton, the bare bones that I want to maximize that light to really cover a lot of wider area, to reach as much sunlight as I can, well, then I'm gonna start doing the pruning. I'm gonna then really start pruning hard or cutting things back um, to then rejuvenate the wood every year to have this strong, healthy growth. Because if you don't do any pruning whatsoever, I really believe a couple things will happen. One, you're gonna get earlier fruits. If you do very minimal pruning and I mean you even preserve the tips, the growth tips here, you're gonna have an earlier crop and probably a larger crop. Now that's a probably, but you definitely will have an earlier crop. Now, if you were to prune off the wood, your crop's gonna be a bit later, but your tree is gonna respond the following season by growing a lot more. So you're gonna see a lot more growth. It's just a fact of life, guys. If you're gonna be pruning in the, in the wintertime with most of your temperate fruit trees, the response the following year with the hormones is that they're gonna grow and grow and grow. But if I prune during the summer, that really encourages fruiting, which is what pinching is, right? So there's different philosophies, and I, I would say you could get the skeleton, 
that you want the bare bones, like here's the skeleton, right? Is this really thick, older wood that has really, you know, really separated itself and branched out horizontally rather than let's say vertically if I was gonna do something like that. You know, like here's this branch right here. If you can, you know, imagine that when this tree was young, this branch grew pretty much horizontally along the soil. And then finally, it reached upwards for that light and was able to take over this area, this canopy here, maintain that amount of light, and then put out these fruiting branches that you see, and then put fruit out on those consistently. But once you get this bare bones structure, you can kind of take a different approach. You can let the you know, tree keep these growth tips here. I would highly suggest keeping these growth tips for the most part or keeping most of them. Maybe you can do a little bit of you know, rejuvenation pruning here and there uh, or let's say aggressive pruning here and there. You could even just cut off the tips as cutting off a lot of these tips will actually encourage them to really start branching out. Um, even just a couple inches of wood can go a long way in terms of actually activating that growth the following season. So there's many thought processes and different approaches to this, but, but mine really is gonna be about with these younger trees, and I don't think anyone can really disagree with this or refute this, is with the younger trees, we wanna keep them we don't want to really prune them that much. We want them to kind of go crazy, not totally crazy. I mean, we want to have the right structure to our trees, right? We want to be encouraging them to get the bare bone structure that we want at a younger age. But we also don't really want to be pruning them because I would rather, here's my thought process, like take a tree like this as an example, which is a really good example, I think. Let me put this uh, up here. We'll move you guys in a second. So this is a two year old tree from cutting. And that, let's imagine really quickly, by the way, when we start out with our younger trees, we have something, you know, really small, like let's say this, right? A rooted cutting, we stick it in the five gallon size pot. It grows up. Maybe it looks like this at this point and it's a bit larger. Maybe it's two feet long. Maybe it's about three feet long. And then from that whip, the following season, or even let's say in one season, you manage to get some branching down here at the base and you actually have kind of a Y situation or a V situation where the, the main scaffolds or a couple of the scaffolds are really branching out away from each other. And then you end up with something like this, right? And this is, I think, again, a perfect example of what it is that you should probably do, right? So we have the main stem that comes up and then maybe in the second year, actually in the first year, I was able to actually get this V structure here that you see, or this Y. So I had the, the trunk from the base, then it split off. Then the following season, I, I pruned the tops and it branched out in different directions. And now you see along this tree, multiple branches now. But I would argue instead of, let's say, pruning some of this back, we could even do some bending of the limbs in some way, keeping these branches away from each other, maximizing more of that light. When I bend actually these branches more horizontally, the tree will naturally, based on its own hormones, will actually start sending up growth to take over this area. I don't have to really, you know, prune it necessarily to get growth. I can just bend branches. I can just stake the wood. And, you know, I've done that time and time again, again with some of these trees. Now, what you really want to get something like this or one of these trees over here, which is such an established tree at this point. I mean, they're like seven plus years old. You gotta have to get the tree to really encourage it to get some of this lower branching or even some of this weirder stuff. Uh, theoretically, I guess you don't need this lower branching. I could cut this off if in the future, if at some point of this tree's life that it branched out this way, I bent the branches and it took over this section as it kind of is down here just at a higher point. So we don't really need some of this lower growth, but what we really want in the future as we bend some of this wood 
is we really want this to start branching out. And maybe, yeah, so this year I could take off the tips, right? Uh, pruning off these tips, it's gonna encourage the tree, as I said, to start branching out. I don't have to do some really hard pruning and take off a lot of this growth. I like the growth. Um, and most situations, I like the growth where it's at. It's so pliable, the fig tree would, when it's young like this, I can bend the trees to my will, organize them to my will. So here's another example. This is a tree that is, um, let's say, I think it's about four years old. So this is a three or four year old tree. So the tree we looked at will at some point turn into this. And so this tree, I didn't do a great job with it in its younger age. As you can see, the tree is really leaning this way there isn't a whole lot of growth being directed this way until I get to the top, which this top growth is now finally going in the direction where we actually have this one branch here, which is way too far out. So I may make a pruning cut right here, very, very minimal in the spring when I bring these trees out, put them back on the patio. Um, I may also bend this branch down in the spring and I probably will do some really hard staking and try to really bend this, this tree so that it is now focused more horizontally out in this direction. And still from this point, continuing on with a lot of these fruiting branches, right? This is gonna branch out. This is gonna branch out. This is gonna branch out. You know, this is gonna branch out. So yeah, I'm gonna preserve the tips on most of these branches. Um, but there are some good buds here. You can see the really thicker buds uh, at the top of the branches. Those are really where you're going to see good growth the following season and earlier fruits. So if you can, you know, in a sense, think about in the future what this tree really is going to look like, try to organize it in the right way uh, from an earlier standpoint, getting the bare bones set up, then we can maybe start thinking about you know, pruning these trees a bit more. Um, you know, as I said, like this is a good structure right here, but it's not really focused this way. It's not really maximizing as much light as it could. And even let's say this space isn't taken up and this space isn't taken up, you know, and this, there's a giant hole in this tree right here. So we need to kind of fill this in. And this is how our trees over time will just naturally become more productive we get more fruiting branches. We're covering more of an area. More of those leaves will cover that area. Um, so, you know, I think that's mostly in terms of, let's say, a lack of pruning uh, that I wanted to cover because there's other, there's other approaches to this. It's not just, I want to prune to let it grow, right? Or to encourage it to grow uh, by changing those hormones. It's also, let's maybe even just take off a couple of the tips or even just bend a branch to change the hormones in that branch. Another thing I may do, and I think I actually will do this with this tree, take it up out of the pot and tilt the tree a little bit. Tilt the root ball so that this is now more forward this way. And uh, that way I don't have to sacrifice this branch. This will then just be up here like this, maximizing this light and it'll just kind of correct itself. So, you know, sometimes the trees don't grow the way you want. It's unfortunate. I know a lot of people, uh, you know, in terms of the actual form really quickly, you may think, oh, well, this is a nice open center that it's gonna eventually form as I bend these branches. Some people do the central leader, right? And the central leader is just a main stem, a main trunk that comes up and eventually starts branching out. Or, well, this is kind of an open center, but along this main stem would be all these branches coming out in different directions. And you could do it like that, right? It's all about maximizing that light. There's no form, I personally think, even if you did it as a bush, you had multiple trunks from the base, it doesn't matter. So this discussion, whether or not a tree is better or a bush, bush is better or a central leader is better, is absolutely pointless, uh, kind of utterly ridiculous because it's all about maximizing that light. So. I showed you guys the younger trees, what those look like. Then we get to the, you know, one to two to three year old trees. Then the three to four year old trees there on the left. 
And then of course, finishing it off, having that finished product here of what we're trying to really achieve of getting these bare bones, getting the tree horizontal, maybe even the right height, trimming the tree. I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna touch these trees. I'm, I'm not kidding. There's very few trees out here that I will really do much pruning at all this year. Um, and I just really do believe, especially by preserving these tips, having good growth from these larger buds, we're better off. I can bend the branches. I don't have to be doing the pruning to maximize the light. If I was gonna do any pruning, uh, you know, again, it would be mostly focused on something that I could not bend or could not fix by staking the branches or if the form is so bad, or if the tree is unhealthy, that I had to. And if the tree is unhealthy, by the way, you need to start with a healthy tree. You cannot have a health, an unhealthy rootstock, an unhealthy base of your tree, and, ha and expect your tree to be virus-free, or mostly virus-free, uh, healthy and productive in the future. You really need to kind of shake that off. I mean, you can, you can get away with not rejuvenation pruning, but uh, I would personally, I think you're really just kicking yourself in the shins like for years, right? You're banging your head against the wall for years when you don't really have to. You know, you sacrifice almost a year of the early stages of the tree's life, get some nice growth from the base and then work with that. You know, rather having a healthier base that sets your tree up for success in the future. You know, that's probably the one of the most important things I do for my trees. Uh, that virus, fig mosaic virus, yeah, you can deal with it and there's other ways of kind of getting around it. But again, I think long term, you're just banging your head against the wall um, and you're better off just rejuvenation pruning the tree.